Lecture three is going to start talking about different wars or battles that were fought as a result of the Cold War. We're going to start by talking about Korea because chronologically that is the next event that took place as a result of the Cold War. Korea was like a lot of countries, a country that was a country that was divided. This country was divided between North Korea and South Korea um, geographically, but it was also divided because of its political affiliations. North Korea was a communist-led um, portion of the, the country of Korea, and South Korea was anti-communist. In fact, South Korea is a current democratic republic quite similar to the United States in that they actually have the three branches of government that we use, the executive, legislative, legislative and judicial. Um, their president was recently impeached March 10th, as to be exact, um, for corruption, something that um, is a option to democratic societies that is not an option to communist societies because corruption is not a big deal when it comes to communism because that's a lot of what they thrive on or are based on. Uh, our involvement as far as the Cold War with Korea began in, after the Korean War started in 1950. The Korean War was 1950 to 1953 uh, and it was a result of the North Koreans who invaded South Korea because they wanted to spread communism. North Korea was supplied by the USSR, who we've talked about quite a bit, and China. Both of these countries are communists and both of them were wanted to spread communism, imperialism again, uh, by way of the SSR, excuse me, by way of the Korean War. Um, the whole theme of invading South Korea was that the communist type of government would be expanded. They would hope that if they were able to be successful, that there would be that many more communist um, followers. Not that the communist would would have more leaders because we already know how that works. The fewer the leaders, the happier they are. But they'll have people who follow who would follow the the rule of the leader. If for nothing else, fear of the uh, repercussions of what would happen. The United Nations or UN sent troops, mostly Americans. Again, we're the we're the uh, superpower, so we're the, we got the stronghold here, right? Um, sent. Um, troops into South Korea to provide support and to spread to stop the spread of communism. They wanted to hold communism at bay, another example of containment if you will. They were trying to keep the North Koreans, the, the Soviets from USSR and the Chinese from China from spreading communism throughout South Korea. The Chinese sent troops into North Korea to fight the UN. They were pretty good at what they did. They helped rack up a lot of deaths um, on both sides, um, but fortunately they weren't as, as successful as they liked at spreading communism. An armistice, which we've already heard that term before as well, which is a ceasefire was signed in 1953. Ceasefire simply says that the communist North Korea and the Democratic Republic of South Korea would no longer attempt to engage each other in physical battles. Now that doesn't mean that they would become friends by any means. It didn't mean that they were no longer weren't any longer enemies. It just meant that they would no longer actively fight one another. 
the border between North and South Korea was set at the 38th parallel. Uh, that would be 38 degrees north latitude. That is the line that can be seen here. This is the 38th parallel. There's a little bit of South Korea above the line and a little bit of North Korea below the line. But nonetheless, it is where the dividing line between North and South Korea officially lies. And communism, luckily, in this case, was contained and not allowed to spread any further south than the 38th parallel. Except, again, those places where it's not perfect. South Korea remained a non-communist country, which I explained to you a little bit ago, because they're still a democratic republic. They're not a uh, communist country by any means. Uh, not that some people have not tried to make them that way still, but so far they've been successful in resisting. Vietnam. Vietnam is probably part of the Cold War that you've probably heard the most about. It was one of the bloodiest wars that we as Americans have ever been involved in. Vietnam was divided in 1955 and uh, to the north and south just like the Korean War. You had the North Vietnamese who were communists and the South Vietnamese who were not. Uh, they were an anti-communist country in fact that were fighting to maintain their freedoms. Now the country of Vietnam in the north, or North Vietnam, was led by Ho Chi Minh. Um, he was pretty smart strategically when it came to military operations and was not a bad military leader in their opinion. Um, problem most people have with him is the fact that he's a communist. Uh, he was supported by China and the Soviet Union because um, they were both, again, trying to spread communism through imperialism. South Vietnamese was anti-communist and it was supported by the great United States of America and the country of France. We provided them with, just like everyone else, the means to defend their way of life. Vietnam War was 1957 and 1975. In 57 and 75, the Vietnam War, one of the, the major tactics was used by the Viet Cong, which is a communist guerrilla group that tried to take over South Vietnam. Guerrilla warfare is defined as sudden unexpected attacks carried out by an unofficial military group or groups that are trying to change the government by assaults on the armed forces. Uh, this is kind of your hit and run military style tactic. They would attempt to make an impact and then run. The Viet Cong were very successful. Killed a lot of people. They were back by North Vietnam, China, and Russia. U.S. involvement in Vietnam was from 60 to 73. If you notice, we weren't involved at the beginning or at the end of it. We were kind of in that middle window there. Um, we were there because we were trying to keep peace, but we weren't as successful as we thought we'd be. Uh, we sent in aid to South Vietnam. That aid consisted of a lot of different things, money, weapons, and military advisors. Um, ironically, in my opinion, I think that military advisors is kind of a strange term seeing as how we wind up supplying military troops. The U.S. began sending troops in 1964 to Vietnam. Um, unfortunately, because we did send as many troops as we did, there were 1.5 million Vietnamese killed and 58,000 American soldiers. 
um, we went to DC on the field trip. One of the things we got to visit was the wall, and the wall was every name of every person that died as a result of Vietnam that was in the U.S. military. All the names. Um, Vietnam was probably one of the most critical points in American history as far as driving a wedge between groups of people. Only second, I think, to the Civil War. We uh, were divided over whether or not we should have been there or not. We were divided over whether or not we should have taken action the way we took action. It's put a lot of strain on our um, social systems as well as our political systems. The anti-war put protest pushed U.S. to end a war. We were not really planning on it, but I guess it's form of appeasement. We decided it would be in our best interest to go ahead and, and withdraw from Vietnam. So the Americans began to withdraw, and by 73, we were pretty much out. Um, now, understand that I said by 73, we were pretty much out. We didn't start withdrawing the troops in 1973. It's like with anything else. You have to do things gradually because if you're too quick, everything you've worked for is liable to fall apart. So you have to take it piece by piece in effort in an attempt to not destabilize. Communists took over South Vietnam in 1975. Um, so Vietnam was reunited as a communist nation entirely. One of the things that I'm bothered by with that is the fact that a lot of the clothing we buy is from Vietnam. This is one of those instances in history where we, the U.S., failed to contain communism. Communism was successful in Vietnam, whereas we were unsuccessful. Cuba. It's a little island that's about 200 miles off the coast of the southern tip of Florida, Key West, Florida. So it's really close to us. Cuba was also a com communist country led by Fidel Castro. Castro recently died and now his son, whose name I can't remember at this moment, is the leader of Cuba. Um, they, they're supported by the Soviet Union which means that they're really not supported by us. Um, in fact, up until recently, we had sanctions in place or restrictions on what we would or wouldn't buy from them, what we could or couldn't sell them, things of that nature. In 1962, we had the Cuban, Cuban Missile Crisis. The Soviet Union brought nuclear weapons, nuclear missiles to Cuba. The purpose in them bringing those weapons to Cuba was to uh, be able to use them against the United States should the Cold War have become fought up between us. American spy planes took photos of missile sites, which didn't help Cuba at all. Um, and we deemed this to be a huge threat to the U.S. security because if they were able to gain control of Cuba to the point where they could put these missile silos in place or we make Cuba mad enough, those missiles could be fired. At 200 miles away, that's just minutes before a missile is launched and it, and it strikes its target. Cuba is only 90 miles. Correction, I was thinking 200. It's 90 miles away from the U.S. So you're looking at a matter of a minute, minute and a half before 
of missiles launched and hitting somewhere up around South Carolina, if necessary. Missiles could easily reach major U.S. cities. Again, Columbia is not as major as some of the others, but within two or three minutes, that's before we can scramble an airplane. That's before we can launch our own uh, defense systems. The U.S. and Soviets came very close to a nuclear war during this time. Um, so close, in fact, that people began making fallout shelters and things of that nature because they want to be prepared in the event that we had an attack. U.S. President John F. Kennedy, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, demanded the Soviets remove the missiles from Cuba. Um, initially, this wasn't happening. But the U.S. military imposed a blockade on um, Cuba until the Soviets agreed to remove the missiles. Now, I don't know if the Soviets ever removed all of them. I don't know if the Soviets were able to sneak someone back in. I'm not sure if there's still Russian missiles, or excuse me, Soviet missiles there. Nikita Khrushchev, the Soviet leader, agreed to remove the missiles as long as the U.S. agreed not to invade Cuba. Um, unfortunately, in our history, we have a long history of making compromises when we should possibly take action. This case, maybe not so much, but at the same time, we allowed a lot of stuff to be done that we would not normally allow. And Nuclear war was avoided. Personally, I think that nuclear war is going to be avoided for pretty much the remainder of my life and y'all's life because everyone's scared that if a nuclear weapon is launched that the ones that aimed at them are going to be launched as well. So we refrain from launching nuclear weapons. We prefer to send in jets and planes with larger weapons um, that don't have the fallout as a nuclear weapon. The struggle for influence in South Africa. Okay, after World War II, African nations began fighting for independence. The United States and the Soviet Union competed for influence in African countries we both did the exact same thing. We both gave money and military aid to different countries. We tried to spread our ideas, and some African nations chose not to take sides. Some did. Some are Soviet controlled, some are US controlled, in a matter of speaking. But some of them are still themselves. Now remember, this is where you need to know that Africa is a continent, not a country. Um, it even points it out in the African countries. Um, Africa is a, is a wealth of resources that any country would love to have as its ally um, and also as a place it controls. But at this time, most of the countries in Africa are not controlled by the U.S. or um, the Soviet Union. A lot of them are controlled independently and that is part of the reason why we have so many third world countries in Africa. Now we talked quite a bit however we're going to leave off here um, and we're going to take up lesson four, lecture four with the race for technology. Uh, just a little foreshadowing this is going to talk a little bit about the space race and the other things that we did as a country us and the Soviet Union to try to gain status throughout the world.